from Times Square in the heart of New York City, it's The Cube, covering Imagine 2018. Brought to you by Automation Anywhere. Hey, welcome back everybody. Jeff Frick here with The Cube. We're in downtown Manhattan at Automation Anywhere Inspire 2018. Uh, about 1,100 people talking about bots and RPA, that's robotic process automation for those that aren't in the know. And we're excited to have another co-founder uh, join us. She's Needy Meta. she's an SVP uh, and co-founder. Welcome. Nice to meet you, Jeff. So you are, uh, you're tackling some of the softer, more complex uh, issues that come up around machines and bots and people and working together and people uh, people's jobs getting take away. So it's, as, as leaders, try to put in more automation, start thinking about adopting things like Automation Anywhere and bots. What are some of the big ethical things they need to think through? What are some of the bigger issues that maybe aren't top of mind, but really worth a little deeper thought? So one of the things we like to bring to focus is um, that corporate leadership and corporations must look at it for, with a human focus. Um, robotic process automation uh, helps get rid of the mundane and repetitive tasks, but the ultimate goal is so that you can enable the humans to do more, to enable uh, a lot more uh, uh, creativity or outside the box thinking or come up with new service models, uh, come up with new ways to solve things. Um, and this is only possible if you get rid of the repetitive mundane tasks, which often blog, bogs down uh, humans. Right. Um, and so uh, coming at it f from asking leadership to look at it right from the forefront. How can we enable the humans to do more? How can we enable our human workforce to use this technology to unleash that potential? Right. And how receptive is the workforce to that message? Or are they just afraid that these bots are coming in to take their jobs on some of these more repetitive tasks? Or you know, is the rollout and the communication and some of your guys' customers You've been at this for a while. You know, is that part of kind of the rollout? Is that part of the implementation to say, hey, you know, the goal here is to help these things with the with the stuff you don't like to do so much in your right, job, so right. that you can have a higher level of, of productivity, a higher level of contribution, right. a higher level of everyday activity and tasks. Absolutely, um, I think uh, change is always hard, and it uh, it takes a while to progress through it. Um, Reskilling is a part of uh, some of this change that we are going through, especially with people working with bots or bots taking over some of the more repetitive of mundane tasks in a way. Um, but having the leadership uh, walk that change management, walk that transition with the human workforce um, is, is part of our endeavor and we enable our corporations that work with us and our partners um, to make sure that they are able to do that and bring that focus to the human workforce. The more we talk about it, the more we uh, put corporate focus on reskilling and uh, talking to our human workforce about what the ultimate vision is and how we are going to um, get there is very, very important. Right. Now you are co-founder, you've been at this for a while, and yet your blogs talk about audacious bots. Audacious is a really interesting choice of words and one that you very specifically pick. What is so audacious about bots? And is that both a good thing and a bad thing? I think so. Uh, uh, the audacity of bots, as I like to put it, is because bots promise to um, self-learn or uh, perform uh, certain things like a human does or perform cognitive functions. Um, to some extent, think. Uh, through certain uh, problems or uh, uh, questions that arise. Um, and think is such a human um, skill set, and we, we, we uh, asking a bot to do the same thing as that is very, very difficult right. uh, for a human to comprehend. Um, and that's why I call these bots audacious, because they promise to do all these things. But if we keep the thought process that why are we enabling this technology, why are we focusing or encouraging this technology to be adopted, is so that humans can unleash that potential. Humans can get to that next level, right. um, and so it's important to do so. Right. But here touched on an interesting thing in the keynote about now you, people are creating bots that are creating bots. Yes. So you know, and we hear about that all the time, right? We've heard about the machines talking to one another in a language that nobody that nobody <laughs> understands what they're talking about. So have you seen you know the increases in compute, the increases in networking, the increases in storage, the prices of those things going down. How has that changed the evolution of the bots that you guys are creating? How do you see that change in the evolution of the development of these tools going forward? 
bots creating bots is an interesting concept, uh, but but remember that the context of the bot creating the bot is still up to the human. What we allow the bot to do or what he is able to um, get more productivity out of uh, is important. And so if we get those barriers right or we get those um, positions right for the bots to work in, um, then it is a pure corporate enhancement. It's, a, it's an enhancement of everything that the corporation brings to the table. Right, right. I'm just curious, like I said, you guys have been at this for a long time. When people start to really get into their into their journey with this technology and really is starting to implement it and see things, what does happen to the human workforce? Do they get redeployed? Are they just doing uh, different types of activities generally within the same kind of category of work? How, how have you actually seen it evolve in, in the real world? So um, uh, yes to all those questions in a way. Right? Some people will get redeployed, uh, but what we are seeing right now is most people are able to take what they have and get rid of some of the things that they didn't really want to do anyways, which was very time consuming and often not a big value add to their own job sets that they're bringing to the workspace. So having that uh, availability for the human to say, um, yes, I want to get rid of this 25% of my work that is very, very repetitive um, and have a bot do it so that I can actually go and think, do the five things I've always wanted to do, right. but I never got to it. Right. Um, that's what we see on the work floor. Um, we've also seen amongst all our implementations that uh, humans who are embracing this uh, bot enablement, as I like to call it, um, don't want to go back to the other way of doing it. It has improved their uh, work life. It has improved what they bring to the table. It has improved how they deal with their coworkers or their jobs or what they are responsible for. Um, and they really don't want to go back. That's right. what we're seeing on the floor. Right. Um, and that's great. That means we're on the right track. We are enabling them with technology that will make a difference to that human. Right. And that is what this is all about. Right. I don't think, too, there's enough talk about humans aren't really good at repetitive tasks. You know, those are, those are where we make the most errors. Unfortunately, people don't use the copy Pace function yes. enough, and I think we all where where it kind of manifests itself in a, in just a consumer front end application is addresses yes. and address verification. When you buy something online and you get that thing that says, you know, here's the address that you typed in, right. you know, here's the address that we have in our system. And it's it's just a, a very clean, simple cross check example of a, of a cross check verification because we're not good as a, as a species exactly. at repetitive, mundane tasks. It is that's not our core strength and. Uh, I haven't met a human who hasn't failed to impress me in some form or fashion. Um, if we can unleash that potential on every human, um, we are capable of such greatness. Uh, we are not born to um, transfer data from one system to another or um, do the same thing uh, in rote without even considering or bringing any enhancement to that data or that process. Right. Um, and that's what we want to enable humans to do, to get to that next level right. of what they capable of. So Nidhi, I want to give you the last word. You've been at this from the beginning, 14 years, there's 1,100 plus people here in New York this week for this event. Just your impressions of how, you know, how it feels to grow. I'm sure you're a, you know, proud mama moment to, to see, you know, your company grow into what it's become. So as you, as you look back and you reflect and you, you take in what's happening all around us here, just love to get your general impressions. Um, it's been extremely exciting, I think, for multiple reasons. One is that uh, we get to work with um, uh, absolutely fantastic human beings, I think, who, are, who have brought a lot of greatness to Automation Anywhere. Um, and it's, it's been an exciting journey from a career standpoint. Um, from an industry and from a societal standpoint, I think we're also at a cusp. We've changed a lot of the world of business and how it works. Um, and that is extremely satisfying to see. Um, if we can leave something behind, from the future of work prospects uh, for our children. Um, it is something uh, that I uh, am very happy about. Good, well, I got to get some of this automation in my day-to-day -day life, let me tell we'll you do. that. <laughs> All right, Needy, well, thanks for taking a few minutes of your day and sitting down with us. Thanks, Jeff, it was absolutely a pleasure. All right, she's Needy, I'm Jeff. You're watching theCUBE from Automation Anywhere Imagine in New York City. Thanks for watching.